Welcome to today's episode of the Horton Hustle Podcast. This is part two of our differentiation series where I'm going to talk about some of the strategies that you can employ in your classroom, you can employ in your lesson plans, you can employ in your anecdotal records to be a differentiation aficionado. Now, we're going to talk about two items for discussion under the umbrella, the massive under umbrella of this concept of differentiation. We're going to talk about the process of differentiation and also accommodations that you can utilize. Now, let's talk about accommodations. You know what? If you can document that your students have a reduced reading level where you've diminished, decreased your expectations for that student, write it down by George. Now, one thing I love to employ are anecdotal records. That's like a big matrix, if you will, where I just write down that student's name and just write down something that the student acquires or something that I did to that kid every single day to show more importantly that you understand differentiation every child every day you're equipping these children these students with tools for their tool belt so that they can experience success that they can experience the scaffold to success if you will now different accommodations if you can give them more time if you've given them more time for an assignment write it down like you know and i don't want teachers to think that you have to spend all of your time just being a, a clerk if you will, like a court clerk where you're just typing, writing down everything all the time. But do the best you can because you'll want to come back to this and, and you'll thank yourself later if you ever have a doubt or if you ever have a question or if you ever have a parent meeting or an a administrat administrative meeting where they want to talk specifically about a student and their progress or lack thereof. You want to be able to have this documentation down. So uh, don't forget about differentiation, but the D in differentiation needs to stand for documentation. Document, document, document. Now, reduced assignment. Are there times where the student seems to be overwhelmed uh, by external influences? Did you have to reduce the assignment? <laughs> Write it down, man. Or woman. <laughs> So you, do you need to it, provide more instructional support? Uh, are you having to utilize cooperative learning, reciprocal learning? Does your student seem to thrive when they're in smaller groups without the teacher? Uh, perhaps maybe you have help in your classroom. Perhaps maybe there's a paraprofessional or there's a co-teacher or there's uh, learning support that comes in the form of um, English as a second learner, if, if, if there's a, another body in that classroom, write it down if they're getting specific help from that particular person that's not you. Also, why don't you have your kids, and I know that it's mightily expensive, but it is kind of trend worthy to discuss. If you keep notebooks, if you will, make sure that your students are not just copying down graphic organizers. No, they need to be generating, they need to be thinking, and I want to give a shout out to Thinking Maps because you know you want to see what the kids can do and so often when you open up these these record books if you will these notebooks these student notebooks yeah i can see what the teacher can do but i'm not exactly seeing what the student can do so well, i want to see student generated uh graphic organizers non-linguistic representations if you will it, it, it's ownership i want to see ownership that the kid understands the concept in the classroom Highlighters, and I'm not just saying because they look pretty and they look colorful, no. When the student highlights information that they deem important, they are synthesizing, they are summarizing, they are breaking down information into nuggets that they can chew on, that they can understand, that they can employ, and they can make a real life application to what they're learning. And you know, that, that, is, that is huge in terms of research-based effective strategies, if they can highlight information to determine what is most important. Okay, conferencing. A lot of the conferences that we have are verbal. You know, we, we can anecdotally and formatively discuss a student's progress or, or what you need to do to develop um, as you circ circulate the classroom. But, and I know that this is just unpopular, but I try to write down something. Uh, and I understand, because we can't keep a good record of every, everything we do in a day. It's impossible. We, we just don't have that kind of time. But in order to maximize the instructional time that we have and to be able to document it, just write down something. An anecdotal record in the matrix, that, that's something. That's something that can really help you out. Now, frequent feedback. If you spend more time with certain students than other students, write it down. And, and I would almost like carry a stopwatch, if you will, because I hate to call them black holes, but th there's some students that require, they desire for them to light that fire. They need more proximity to the teacher. So if you have to rearrange that student's desk so they're closer to you, 
or if you need to rearrange that student's desk so they are not so close to you because sometimes there's a, a social emotional need that supersedes the instructional need. So sometimes if they're if they seem like they're nagging or they seem like they're just really needy, perhaps maybe that's a social emotional um, requirement that they need. And, and I would try to provide them with support in some of the more sociable students who can uh, be of great benefit to that student. Verbal rehearsal, okay? So that is almost an opportunity for your students to practice, to employ a lot of the strategies in which you're using in your classroom. I love verbal chants, I love uh, songs especially, so verbal rehearsal to me is just the, the acuity to detail in, in practicing and making perfect a concept that may be a little bit too ambiguous, maybe not very clear, you can clarify with utilizing verbal rehearsal. A study guide. Now, do you provide study guides to your students? It's become a very popular trend. My wife and I were talking the other day about how we uh, we missed the times, and especially in high school, where we were given a very small index card, and the teacher or coach or whatever, whoever was in charge, they would tell us that they could, we could take home that card overnight, and we could write down as much information as we wanted on the card. Now, for as much information as some of these high school courses require, that's kind of a monumental task. But for me, it, it meant a lot to me that the instructor, the teacher, the coach, if you will, wanted to give us an opportunity to succeed. And so giving us an index card where we could write down things that we thought we could use on that assessment, that summative assessment, that was big for me. So I would write that down in your anecdotal records if that's something that you employ. Seating chart, the accommodations, some kids simply cannot work with other students. I'm just gonna lay it out there. And you know, sometimes other students are an impediment to that particular student's progress. Sometimes that student is their own worst enemy and you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, sitting in isolation, to me, look, it's something that is a, is a subject of, of debate, but you're always looking out for that student's best interest. You need to make sure that you're giving them a situation where they can succeed. So if you need to reappropriate that student and where they're seating, uh, where, where they're sitting, you do it, okay? What about chunking material? That, that's one thing I love. When I think of chunk and chunking material, I think about that chunky candy bar. But no, we're, we're not gonna digress on that. We're gonna be focusing on breaking down information, synthesizing it, making it kid-friendly and understandable. Because you know what? No one likes a big nerd sitting up there in the top regurgitating information where no one understands what they're talking about, the vocabulary is too elevated, and it's not practical for something that the students can apply in the real world. So chunking material is just breaking down information where they can utilize it to their benefit. Now, do you teach study skills? Do you teach what it is that you're expecting your students to do? Do you model it? Perhaps maybe there's a certain executive function skill set that they do not have. Perhaps maybe that's something you need to stop and think about. Perhaps maybe there's some things that you need to give them that they don't have. They don't have the foundation. They don't have the, uh, the, the knowledge to study correctly. And, when, and, and so perhaps maybe that's something that you need to utilize. And if you do utilize it, put it in your anecdotal records. That's something that you had to do. You had to go back to the basics. Sometimes when we're teaching quote unquote third grade, we're not teaching third grade, we're teaching first grade. And you know what I'm talking about. True differentiation, Lord, I think about students that are uh, in the social sense, more, de more developmentally uh, endowed than the other students. And you know, you have a classroom of just a mixed bag of, of ability, and, um, and, and background, uh, and so, you know, you need to understand that there, there comes a lot of different needs. Uh, and, and so when you need to challenge students, when you need to remediate, review, you need to document that. Document your thoughts, you know, journal, if you will. A journal is a great utilization of, doc, of documentation and for differentiation. It's evidence, if you will. Now, motivational. So when you give kids a, like a sticker for a sticker chart or for a motivational chart or for a performance-based chart, do you document it? That is great differentiation, if you will. So this particular episode, we're just gonna focus on the accommodation so we can get in and get out in the 10 minutes. Now, we discussed a wide variety, a wide spectrum, if you will, of accommodations. I don't want you to be confused with uh, special education accommodations. These are accommodations that you can give to every student that is not required on a piece of paper. These are just everyday accommodations, um, appropriations, if you will, that you give out to students in their tool belts in order for them to experience success in the classroom. So. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. 
ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.